Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. <coughs> Today our lecture is about uh, safety and health for the chemicals part. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Dafizi, okay, uh, as head of occupational safety and health in FST, okay. For uh, this lecture, uh, I deliver for the STKK uh, 6014 and STPD 6014. Eh? Uh, actually, the same content and uh, the same lecture. Eh? So, uh, <coughs> this all about the uh, safety and health for the chemicals. Eh? Okay, what is uh, safety? Eh? It is a state in which or a place where you are safe and not in danger or at risk. Eh? This is by Cambridge, eh? Cambridge, Cambridge Dictionary. And then for the health is the condition of the body and the degree to which it is free from illness or the state of being well. <clears throat> for the chemical is a base, any basic substance that is used in all produced by a reaction involving changes <coughs> to atom or molecules. Okay, chemical safety is a major safety issue at workplace. Eh? Um, this is some uh, record eh, about the uh, incident eh, uh, involving uh, chemicals incident. Eh? This happened at UITM Shah Alam, eh? 15 July 2013. If not mistaken, this is uh, at uh, chemical engineering eh? at the lab. Okay, this is lab uh, in UMT, University of Malaysia, Terengganu. Eh? Okay, this also um, Sekolah Jenis Kemasaan China, SJKC, Komin, uh, Jalan Tun Dr. Ismail. Huh? Okay, uh, there is a theory associated uh, with incident eh, or accident. Okay, uh, the early theory is uh, proposed by Henrich around 1930s. Eh? Uh, this theory highlight that uh, any accident or incident happen because of unsafe act or condition. Eh? Uh, if you can see at the medium, eh? if we uh, avoid any unsafe act or any unsafe condition, so we might prevent any incident or accident happen. Okay. Uh, so for this theory, it more on the faulty of a person. Eh? Uh, okay, uh, this is the three basic causes of accident. It's about uh, poor management, safety policy and decision, personal factor and environmental factor. If unsafe act or unsafe condition, eh? uh, and then uh, this is indirect causes. Eh? Uh, unplanned incident and then the uh, direct cause for the accident personal injury uh, so actually accident can happen by basic causes or indirect causes eh? okay uh, when we're talking about uh, accident or incident uh, these three terms uh, hazard risk danger uh, is always associated eh? uh, for any accident or incident happen. Hazard, risk and danger. What is hazard? Hazard is a, the keyword is potential. Potential to get harm. Uh, potential to get harm. Eh? For the risk, risk is about likelihood times with Severity. Uh, we will uh, discuss later, and then for the danger is is about exposed. Uh, uh, hazard. Hazard is potential. Eh? 
the risk is likelihood time severity when it comes exposure eh, when we expose to the uh, hazard okay it can cause danger uh, okay is this considered hazard actually not yeah because the chemicals itself is not a hazard but if improper handling eh, associate eh, we can call it is hazard uh, ha because hazard is potential uh, what is potential here improper handling eh? okay for the risk assessment this is the basic uh, how to how to do risk assessment eh? so risk is equal to likelihood time with severity so we might have to to use risk matrix eh? to uh, as a tool as a tool to help us to find out eh, or to determine the the level of risk you cannot easily say some action or some condition is high risk or low risk or medium risk we have to determine it we have to uh, to use this uh, tool to determine the level of risk okay so uh, two parameter here the likelihood eh, whether uh, okay actually the risk matrix eh, usually we can use four times four uh, this is uh, introduced by NIOSH eh, four times four but for the DOSH eh, Department of Occupational Safety and Health uh, they introduced the five times five eh, so got five column and five row here uh, but i usually use the four time four uh, is uh, uh, okay uh, is maybe it's better eh? uh, because easier for the beginner to to do the risk uh, risk assessment okay for the likelihood very likely likely unlikely and highly unlikely this is about the how much how frequent eh, the activity how frequent that you work with uh, that condition uh. and then the consequence is how severe the impact eh, whether it is negligible injuries or minor injuries or major injuries or it come to fatal eh? so if you know some of the frequency eh, the likelihood and then you know the impact the worst impact uh, so you may do the risk assessment using this risk metric tool eh? okay let's say negligible injuries but uh, it is very likely so medium but if it is uh, unlikely low how do you want to know very likely likely unlikely highly unlikely uh, maybe you have to look back uh, in one week or every day or maybe in two weeks or in uh, one month uh, like that how much the frequency so this is uh, some of the situation that you may use as uh, examples uh, uh, to do the risk assessment okay for the first situation ahmad run a reaction once a week if any mistake happen maybe he will get major injuries uh, okay once a week how do you want to know so you have to to know one month we have maybe how many days okay if one week so in one month maybe we can have four to five weeks so uh, just take maybe five five times in a in a month okay so if five times in a month uh uh how many percent of it five over 30 something like that uh, 
maybe it is around uh, 30%, 20 or 30%. So, uh, this is first 25%, second 25%, the third one, and fourth one. So, 100%. So, maybe if uh, very likely, oh, sorry, this is the first 25%, second, uh, anti 50, anti 75%, and 100%. Okay, maybe in a month, if very likely, every day. Okay, 30 days. Okay, if likely, maybe, if uh, likely, maybe 75%. You calculate, eh? uh, 0 0.75 times with 30 days. How many? Uh, eh? So, if just 5%, 5 over 30, uh, 6, uh, 5 over 30 times 100. It's about uh, 20. So, it is highly unlikely. Okay? But, major injuries. Major injuries, very uh, highly unlikely. So, the risk is medium. Uh, so, same goes with the rest. Eh? City deals with explosive risk. Okay. Chemical once a year. Once a year is not highly uh, so it is highly unlikely yeah not not every month just once a year uh, so it is explosive but explosive is fatal can be fatal so highly unlikely but fatal so the risk is only medium eh? even though the the impact is fatality but uh, the work is highly unlikely, just once a year. So medium, the risk. Eh? This uh, the third one, Chang run experiment using toxic chemicals every day. If every day, so the frequency is very likely. Toxic, uh, toxic chemical is, maybe we can have major injuries. Eh? Can be fatal, but most of them are major. Okay, so high. Okay. And then, uh, Nuru love to drive her car with an average speed about 140, 140. Uh, love to drive, meaning that it is highly likely, eh? very likely. And then 140 <coughs> can be fatal, so very high. The um, risk. Ismail is always driving about 90 km per hour. But today he needs to increase the speed because he has an urgent matter to deal with. Okay, so Ismail usually, usually he follow the rule. But for today he needs to <coughs> increase the speed because he has urgent matter. Eh? So, ve uh, very unlikely. Yeah. <coughs> And then the it can cause major injuries, major injuries, eh, or fatal. So the risk is medium. Okay. Okay for the <coughs> for the health part, eh, we 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 learn bit. Uh, for today is about safety and health. So for the health part, uh. <coughs> Some of the unsafe condition or unsafe act will uh, give impact to the acute or chronic disease. Eh? Okay. Uh, what is acute? What is chronic? In medical term, acute is about ad hoc. Ad hoc uh, impact. Eh? So, <clears throat> acute is may, maybe minor or major injuries or maybe fatal but it is acute ad hoc but for the chronic chronic is a long term exposure effect maybe uh, between 10 to 20 years like cancer infertility or etc maybe dysfunction of your organ eh? so this is chronic 
okay most of our unsafe act or unsafe condition we might get happen um we will deal with the chronic uh, disease later on okay so hopefully that if uh, after this you know the uh, you know some basic of safety and health eh? so you may prevent the chronic disease happen to you eh so uh, by practice a uh, proper way eh, to handle chemicals and uh, or working uh, you prepare the uh, um, proper working condition eh? okay how to control hazard hazard is uh, potential right how to control the hazard uh, why we need to control the hazard because we want to reduce the risk and avoid the danger danger is danger is when we exposed to hazard uh, hazard is potential and then you want to reduce the the risk eh? okay this is the hierarchy controls of uh, hazard <coughs> this is a control measure eh? usually we use uh, the basic formula eh? e c e i s e a p this is the general practice eh? uh, in control measure <coughs> first one elimination second isolation third substitution for engineering control fifth administrative control the last hierarchy is personal protective equipment okay uh, so actually ppe is the the last control measure that taken uh, in hierarchy of control uh, why ppe is the last one we always talking about ppe but in the hierarchy of control PPE is the the last control measure that have to take. Eh? Okay, the first one elimination. Elimination is to stop any unnecessary action. We have to stop any unnecessary action, and then dispose any unused or waste chemicals. Uh, we eliminate. Uh, so eliminate is the first thing first first control measure that have to take eh? and then um, second one is isolation isolation is about guarding concept eh? you uh, you must have special working areas for the high risk task uh, let's say the organic eh? organic usually use the volatiles uh, carcinogenic okay so organic lab for any organic chemicals related experiment eh, we have to avoid use the general purpose lab eh? okay for the substitution you have to change or replace a high risk item with a low risk item or maybe you have to change or replace the method that you use process that you use as an example you use hexane we use hexane rather than benzene or uh, uh, or toluene eh, as organic solvent. Hexane is less harmful. Eh? It is still harmful but it is less harmful eh, compared to uh, uh, benzene or toluene. And then for the EC, eh, engineering control, engineering control are those that involve making changes to the work environment. To reduce work related hazard eh? but uh, for the engineering control uh, we can use the cost effective solution eh? maybe you can have the high-end one but uh, maybe uh, to reduce the cost you can take the minimum cost effective solution eh? as an example uh, by applying the chemical film hood eh? film cupboard film cupboard is a type of in engineering control eh? biological safety cabinets high pressure reactor this kind is engineering control 
when you have to uh, to making changes to the working environment eh, it's about engineering control for the administrative control you have to modify the uh, the easy one is the SOP okay standard operating procedure that is administrative administrative control or you have to modify workers work schedule eh, or task eh? uh, maybe you have to develop chemical hygiene plan eh? or to revise the SOP time by time eh? this is some example of SOP okay this is the PPE why PPE is the last uh, control measure that have uh, that uh, control measure taken eh? uh, because PPE is personal protective equipment it is personal uh, so you only protect yourself you not protect the whole members in the building the whole the whole members in the lab okay so PPE is the last control measure okay to protect ourselves uh, so uh, this is uh, actually PPE have to be worn before the you enter a lab eh? not once enter and then you go to the uh, inside the lab and then maybe in the waging room or whatsoever and then you wear the PPE no PPE have to be worn before you enter the lab. Okay, okay. This is some of the basic PPE. Eh? Uh, it depends on your work. Eh? It depends on the hazard that uh, associate with your work. Eh? Safety goggles, lab coat. This is the basic. Eh? Okay, glove, long pen, and close toe shoe. Uh. Okay, control measure that taken must be alarm as low as reasonable and practicable. Okay, this is some of the chemical hazard symbols. Okay, most of you uh, very common. Eh? This is very common symbol. Eh? No, already. Eh? Most of you uh, understand this symbol. Eh? Explosive, flammable, oxidizing, corrosive, acute toxicity, hazardous, head hazard, serious head hazard, gas under pressure. Okay, this is the hazard classification. Make sure you know how to read this hazard uh, class eh, symbols. Okay, from this uh, class symbol, uh, hazard symbol, uh, you will know for information, eh, for important information. The fire hazard, the instability, uh, the specific hazard, the head hazard. Okay, so the first one, the red one is the fire hazard. Okay, got scale here, 0 up to 4. Uh, the less, the most less one is the uh, very stable, uh, not harmful one. The When increasing the scale, so increase the hazard level okay so the instability maybe zero is stable up to four maybe detonate eh? uh, for the specific hazard maybe it is oxidizer acid alkali corrosive no water radiation hazard for the health hazard uh, maybe normal materials slightly hazardous hazardous extreme danger or deadly uh, the worst case is deadly okay so make sure you know how to interpret this hazard classification eh? okay uh, safety data sheet is a source of info about hazard eh? uh, the, uh, in a safety data sheet this is the, the, the previous one we have MSDS and CSDS now both are combined to have SDS only eh? okay this is 16 components that compulsory uh, uh, stated on a 
SDS, eh, safety data sheet. First identification, then hazard identification. All info are there. Okay, composition information, ingredient. Okay, first aid measure, fire fighting measure, accident, the release measure, handling and storage, exposure, control, personal pro protection, physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, uh, reactivity, toxic toxicological. Ecological information, disposal, consideration, transport information, regulatory information, and others. Eh, uh, so sixteen all in one. Eh, uh, everything in here. So you have to know how to in interpret a uh, SDS because anything happen. First thing first is you have to to know the content of SDS before you do the lab work. You have to know which chemical that you use, and then you have to rev uh to look again, eh, to study each as as the as before you you do the experimental procedure, because anything happen you know the background the info about the chemicals associated with your work, okay. Uh, this is basic uh, component on a label, eh? chemical label. Uh. So you have to know how to interpret the information here, the name, the name of chemicals, the purity, and the most important one is the warning, eh? the hazard symbol. You can get SDS from uh, the supplier. Actually, the supplier, uh, it, the supplier is compulsory to provide SDS during the procurement. Eh? Uh, but you also can uh, have the SDS to refer uh, by online uh, by easily to uh, you enter the Sigma address eh, or mark. And then you type the name of the chemical and then click the SDS. Most of the common uh, chemicals, uh, they have the the common SDS, eh, the general one. But some of the chemicals are different. So the SDS also different. Eh? Okay, this is general laboratory rules. Uh, first, Safety first, okay. You have to always give priority to the safety, okay. Uh, that's why before you enter the lab, you have to wear your PPE, eh? dress properly PPE, and then follow the instruction for the lab for the working. Eh? Be ready for emergency response. No food and drink, okay. Most of the student. Uh, you put your food and drinks inside the lab and also you you taking your food and drink in the lab eh? so this can cause chronic or acute effect eh? disease eh? because of contamination and then no hazard be attentive be careful keep clean handle properly and always clean up after everything finish eh? Uh, this is for the chemical waste management. Okay, chemical waste is any unnecessary chemicals, whether it is harmful or not. It may produce from chemical reaction, washing process, filter product, contaminated compound, expired chemicals. It needs to be collected into waste bottle container. Follow it. Waste classification. Okay, we must classify the waste. Eh? and then improper collection will result on reactive reaction or explosion eh? how to properly dispose of chemical waste okay you may divide some uh, waste into its classification whether it is aqueous or organic maybe it is chlorinated or not chlo uh, non chlorinated solid waste special case eh? okay uh, special case is uh, some maybe some of the waste is mercury eh? Like mercury thermometer, eh? uh, so you have to separate the waste. Eh? 
in uh, different waste container. <coughs> okay, you have to apply secondary tray, uh, maybe uh, chemical splash uh, might happen. Eh? So this is for the protection from the chemical spillage. And then for the emergency situation, uh, any emergency situation, you can contact or refer to the uh, incident officer that is associated with the uh, your building. Eh? Uh, building uh, every level of building, they have assigned uh, the uh, incident officer. Eh? Where you can get this information, uh, you can uh, you can get the information of incident officer at the uh, notice board uh, of safety and health committee. Uh, it is around the uh, actually it is near to the elevator eh? uh, to the lift eh? uh, at the every level. Okay. Please identify which type of emergency situation, whether it is fire, chemical spillage, spillage explosion, injury, uh, and take proper action. Maybe evacuation procedure is needed or not. Okay, uh, you may refer to the incident officer. Eh? Okay, uh, for the chemical spillage in minor condition, you can. Tackle by yourself actually, okay. You the first team first make a barrier, and then cover completely and clean up. Ah, uh, this is uh three main procedure. Eh? Make a barrier, and then you cover completely, and then you clean up. Okay, you can use uh spill uh spill kit. Eh, uh, in every level they have uh provided the spill kit. Eh. You just ask the lab attendant or the safety uh, officer, eh? uh, the incident officer at your level. Okay. And then for the building evacuation procedure, stop any works or lab work. Listen carefully to the instruction given by incident officer. Move up from, move up from the lab or office to the emergency staircase not all staircase uh, used as emergency staircase so that you have to know whether the nearest emergency emergency staircase to your uh, lab eh? and then go downstairs do not use elevator head towards assembly point okay as a conclusion prevent is better than cure Safety cannot be compromised. Safety first. Lab safety must be practiced all the time in the lab. Okay. No care, safe act. Uh, this is some quiz. Okay. Very simple. Uh, hazard. Danger associate and control measure can be taken. Okay. You you actually is good for you to identify, uh, the hazard, danger, and control, uh, associate with your research. Eh? you know early, earlier, uh, is better because you can prevent the, uh, you can reduce the risk and you can prevent any incident or accident happen, uh, during your lab work. Okay, that's all. Uh, our lecture about safety and health for the chemicals part. Okay, thank you.